Good morning, everybody. We're glad you're here today. Tell the person next to you, I'm glad you are with us today. Great to see everybody showing up. And, um, you know, next year, Christmas and New Year's are on a Monday. Yay. Not on Sundays. So, uh, you know, we want to worship together. And I was reading this passage in 2 Corinthians. And it says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled, he reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Tell the person next to you, you're an ambassador for Christ. And then it says, as though God were entreating through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. And then it says, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Let us pray together. Lord, thank you that you have given us the ministry of reconciliation. You don't count our trespasses against us. It says you forgive them, Lord. And we are ambassadors. We beg people on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. And thank you, Lord, that uh, you became our sin bearer on the cross. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. God, I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit would just come through this room today and just pierce our hearts, Lord, that we would draw closer to you, that we would have fellowship with you. There would be nothing in the way of keeping us from being sold out to you. And thank you, Lord, for every person here, those watching online today, Lord, those that are still coming. God, may it be just a great day. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. As long as it's called today, that we would rejoice every day, Lord, because of what you did for us. Thank you. We love you today. We lift up this whole service to you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 If you'd like to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. But let's just worship the Lord together. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong.
pretty crazy that uh, I was just thinking like all the work that had to go into first building the temple well first acquiring the materials to build the temple the tabernacle and all those things and then to actually have all the laborers build it and then to adorn it with all the gold and the scarlet linens and purple linens and all these things that they put into it all the all the um, Plates had to be a certain way, all the cups, everything had to be very, very, very specific. And it took years and years and years to build. And only the high priest could go in, only the priests could go into the Holy of Holies. And the, the people could never really communicate straight face to face with God, with the Almighty. And now we're the temple. There, there is no physical temple. Our bodies are the temple and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And we can have direct communication anytime with God. And that's just... It's something I think that a lot of us take for granted. I know I do. <coughs> so when we sing those words, just kind of think about it a little bit and just, okay, God, let me, <laughs> let me try to cleanse this temple a little bit. <laughs> it's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his brain. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every Roaring with power and fighting our battles. 
One day every knee will bow and every tongue confess what? Jesus. That Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, it's great to see all of you back from Christmas and back in church and fellowship together. And, you know, uh, we got a great body here. And uh, Saturday night, about the same attendance. And Tuesday night is uh, we go through the scriptures. And Wednesday night, all start at 6.30, okay? And then on uh, Thursday night, Tony, where's Tony? Tony's been doing the men's Bible study for over a year. And uh, we're starting the book of James on Thursday nights for any of the guys that want to come. The Women's uh, Fellowship and Bible Study will begin again in February. So, Tony, come on up here. We're going to pray for the tithes and offerings. And if you've missed a week or a month, whatever, put it in the bag. If you're visiting, we're just glad you're here. And uh, we're, you know, I mean, we've had visitors come and, uh, from out of town in different places, and, you know, it's amazing the stories, the miracles that, you know, took place just for them to come here today. I mean, it, uh, God's doing a work, isn't he? He's doing miracles. And so come on up here, Tony. Let's pray for the tithes and offerings. All right. Dave is tall. <laughs> let's pray. Our God and our Father, Lord, uh, just thank you for this day. Um, Thank you for the blessings you've given each one of us and providing for our needs. And uh, we just pray as we provide an offering to you, Lord, that uh, you'll accept it as a cheerful uh, giver. Um, yeah, just uh, loving you, Lord, and thanking you and giving back to the ministry. So we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I tasted. of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flow
And that's what we ask. We ask that the Holy Spirit just come and flood this place with his presence, the presence of the living God here today. And, uh, you know, take out your sermon notes. Everybody have them? You can look back through these uh, throughout the week and, you know, refresh your memory of the things that God taught you today. Anybody have a praise report that they want to share with the rest of the body today? All right. That is a great praise report. Anybody else have a praise report today? John, you're here. That's a miracle. Anybody else? The kids can go to their classes, yes. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. If you don't have a Bible, there's plenty in the back. And uh, feel free to... Get one from the usher here. I know a lot of people use their phones these days, but it helps to have God's word that you can go through as we take a look at all these verses today. Last week, if you remember, we talked about our foundations. And uh, what is our foundation like? Is it cr is in our lives today, is our, our lives crumbling? You know, are they falling apart? Do they have any cracks in them that need to be fixed? You know, our foundation has to be built upon Jesus and his word. If it's not, you're going to, it's like the person that built their house upon the sand. There's no foundation. You know, we just had the rains, you know, we've had quite a bit of rain. It's supposed to rain again on Tuesday, but you know, it's interesting after last week's sermon, I was looking at the road conditions this week. And I noticed a lot of potholes. Have you noticed that? A lot of cracks in the asphalt, you know, and, and people trying to avoid the big holes that are there. And that's exactly what we talked about last week. Satan has set his traps. You know, let's call them pit holes. And so often if we're not in tune and fellowship with God, we fall into those things. And, uh, you know, we need a good foundation, a solid foundation. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, <clears throat> do not give the devil an opportunity. Read that verse to the person next to you. Don't give him an opportunity. Don't give him a foothold in your life and there's so many ways that we can do that and you know god warns us ahead of time don't give them an opportunity and you know um i've heard of so many people that were part of a church somewhere and over the years their love for god has grown cold you know and now they're walk they've walked away from god they've walked away from you know, the faith, they've walked away, walked away from trusting God's word. They, you know, they, I mean, they're involved in all kinds of different sin. And they, their foundation had a crack in it. They, a stronghold, they gave Satan an opportunity. And, uh, you know, Satan is a liar and he wants to destroy us. Turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Look what it says here about our adversary, the devil, not your friend. John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. Do we see any people in the world today following the desires of the devil? He was a murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth. One of the things that's being challenged today is the truth of God's word. And, and Satan doesn't stand in the truth. It says, because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he is a what? Liar, Liar and the father of lies. And he says, because I speak the truth, Jesus says, do you not believe me? Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God does what? 
hears the word of God. For this reason you do not hear them, because you are not of God. I mean, oh man, there's so many people that are right there in that verse, or that passage. You know, they, they don't want to follow Jesus, they're rebelling against God, they're rebelling against their creator, and they're train wrecks, that's a good word, train wrecks. Or they're train wrecks ready to happen, you know. And, uh, you know, God says, I came that you might have life and what? Life more abundantly. abundantly. Does that mean you won't have trials or troubles, problems or tribulation? No. James talks about that. You know, uh, uh, trials that we all go through. And we all have problems. We all have issues. But hopefully we're growing in our relationship with God. And that, you know, you can see the title at the top there. Let's get back to our foundation. Let's get back to that solid word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit guiding and directing us, especially as we start this new year. You know, I read that verse at the beginning. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away and all things have become what? New. new. I mean, it's a new year. Tell the person next year, you have a new start. Start living for God. Don't give the devil an opportunity. Don't give him a foothold into your life. Oh, I'll just try this out. I'll just do this. I'll just do that. No. Have a new start, a new foundation, a fresh start with Jesus. And the old things have passed away. All things have become new. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. God tells us over and over again to abide in his word. You know, if you're not connected to the vine, you're not bearing fruit, you're not connected to God's word. You're not connected, you know, to that joy and fellowship that he wants you to have. And uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it's a great verse to memorize. I encourage you to memorize God's word. Hide it away in your heart, and God will bring it up at the appropriate time. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, go up to verse 1. Realize this, that in the last days, you will never have any problems or issues in your life. Does it say that? It says difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, gossips, without self-control. We see that. Without self-control. Brutal. Haters of good. Treacherous. Reckless. Conceited. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They hold to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power and avoid such people as this. You know, we're in warfare today. And uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Oh, did I didn't even mention the verse I wanted in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, go back there. I'm sorry. And it says... In verse 12, and indeed, 2 Timothy 3, 12, and indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Evil men and imposters will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Man, that's a pretty uh, up-to-date sign of the times, isn't it? Proceeding from bad to worse. Now he talks to the church and he says, You, however, verse 14, continue in the things that you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is what? Inspired by God. All scripture. And profitable for teaching, 
reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. That's basically what we're studying on Tuesday night or Wednesday nights. Training, how to be trained in righteousness. Why? Verse 17, so that the man of God, the woman of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. You know, we have God's word. He wants us to make us adequate and equipped for every good work and, and have a good, solid foundation. Timothy, from a young child, was taught his word, the word of God from his mother and from his grandmother. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can see the life of Timothy and what happened in his life. But, I mean, he accepted the Lord and, and he, you know, wrote a couple of the books of the Bible through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He had a good foundation. And you, all of us here, we are responsible for building a good foundation in our own lives, but also the lives of our kids, our grandkids. You know, I was telling the group last night that uh, we got a couple free tickets to go to SeaWorld. And uh, I misspoke last night. I said, my son of two years old, and everybody looked at Stephanie and they go, how could that be? <laughs> My grandson of two years old, he has his birthday this is next week. And, and w so we said, hey, we got these free tickets. Let's go to SeaWorld. And we took him to SeaWorld. He had an amazing time at SeaWorld. He loved it so much. I mean, he was smiling. You know, we were in one exhibit, and uh, I think it was the shark exhibit. And he goes, wow. You know, and then he saw a, a stingray that was going up the window, you know, in the exhibit. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we read to him, and we have a little Noah's Ark and explaining about the animals and the creation and everything. And it's like he's seeing Noah's Ark right in front of him, all these animals. And, it, I mean, we took him to the uh, dolphin show and, and seeing the dolphin. He was mesmerized <laughs> as they're jumping up and down in the air and all the things and it was wonderful and we're trying to build in him you know the the respect and honor and and the joy of God's word and teaching him God's word from a young child he has a uh, uh, Bible for young kids it's a picture Bible and he loves to see the pictures in the Bible. And, and you know, I, I, I tell him sometimes, go get a book. I mean, we have a lot of different books for him. Go get a book. And he brings me the picture, the, the book of all the animals. And sometimes he brings the Bible. And we just, he enjoys it. You know, <laughs> he's learning the names of the animals. Uh, you know, the lion. What does the lion say? Rrr. You know, what does the dog say? <laughs> Stephanie does this better. What does the elephant say? <laughs> he really loves that one. Let's see Stephanie do it. Teaching a good foundation from God's word. And all of us can do that, you know, with our kids, with our grandkids. And then turn to Hebrews. Chapter 4. And here it is. Verse 12. <clears throat> Since then, we have a great high priest. And it says, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Hold fast to it. You know, you're being challenged in your faith today like no other times. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is tempted in all things and yet without sin. Verse 15. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may have mercy and find grace in the time of need. Verse 12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of the soul and the spirit 
of both joints and marrow. And God's word is able to judge the thoughts and the, and the intentions of the heart. You know, so God's word has to be our foundation. We need to get back to God's word. Why? So that we will be thoroughly equipped, it says in Timothy, for every good work. You know, that's one thing that's happened in the church and our society today is so many, first of all, have, are, through COVID and everything, have said that, you know, we're not going to come back to church, you know, and I think they said something like 30, 40 percent of people that were part of the church aren't coming back to church. And then, you know, how many people actually read God's word every day? We have living uh, uh, the daily walks or the daily breads back there. We There's so many opportunities on radio and television to watch God's word being spoken today. Meditate on God's word so the Holy Spirit can powerfully work through our lives. The Holy Spirit has, the second person of the Trinity, works as, and as we meditate and as we're saturated with God's word. And so what is one thing that Satan is attacking today? God's word. God's word. You know, people coming to church, having fellowship, getting into God's word. Turn to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 8. And when he comes, he's talking about the helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, here's the primary sin, because they do not believe in me. And then concerning righteousness, verse 10, because I go to the Father and you no longer behold me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world, what? Has been judged. I mean, by what Jesus did on the cross, he's been judged. His time is short. You know, he's doomed. You know, even the demons, it says, know who Jesus is and they tremble. You know, some of the apostles were preaching and they go, well, we know you. But we don't know this other guy, you know, because he didn't have the spirit of God living inside of him. You know, and it says the demons attacked him. And so we have the Holy Spirit and we the Holy Spirit brings conviction. You ever do something that, you know, is not right or questionable. And all of a sudden you're kind of convicted and you make a decision. I'm going to do what the conviction of the Holy Spirit says and what God's word says, or I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And many times that's that battle that takes place in our lives between the flesh and the spirit. What's sad is that, you know, here in San Diego, El Cajon area, we have one of the highest rates of sexual abuse of children. You know, um, children trafficking. I mean, they, and it's not just girls. They say it's about 50%. It's about even of boys, young boys being trafficked, you know, in the sex slave, as a sex slave. That is so sad. But we don't hear a lot about it. I mean, we should be in uproar about this thing that's going on. And then the fentanyl use, you know, enough fentanyl has come through the borders in the last year to kill every person in America and every person across the world. That's how much fentanyl is being abused today. Drug abuse, alcohol abuse. You know, so many people arrested on New Year's Eve for alcohol, getting drunk, and destroying people's lives. You know, I just heard a, a, someone knew a friend, young kid, and uh, there was, uh, he, I think he was in his late 20s or 30s, and a 20, I think it was 22-year-old, 24-year-old, was drunk and drive the wrong way on the freeway and kill them. I mean, that driving the wrong way on the freeway and kill them. And his family and his wife and kids, and, you know, they're left without a dad. You know, and, and it's, it should break our hearts as we see what sin does to people. 
and the sin of unbelief, the unpardonable sin, the refusal to trust Jesus, rebellion against God. And, uh, you know, God's word is being shut down in schools. It's being shut down online in different places because people don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear what God's word says. I, this last week, I got another email from Facebook saying that they're going to close down our Facebook account that shares the videos across the line because our, what is it, our content is, yeah, our, our the content, the preaching of God's word is not acceptable to their standards. Now, this is the fourth one that I've gotten, so I don't know if it's fake or whatever, or some, but, you know, they could shut us down. And there's a, another video network that's out there that we'll probably go to if that happens. But we have over a 1,000 people that watch at some point in time the sermons every week. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. All across, you know, the world. And so God's word is going out, and it's living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. speaks right to our hearts. You know, one thing that we need to do is make sure that we are solid in God's word. You know, a lot of people have said is that when they come to Calvary Chapel, you always talk about God's word. Oh. <laughs> and you have so many scripture verses and, and Bible studies and going through God's word. And, you know, well, we should be doing that, right? Turn to John chapter 12, verse 31. A lot of people don't like our content. Well, it's God's content. It's God's word. Yeah, take it up with God. Maybe you're being convicted of your relationship with God. In John chapter 12, verse 31, now judgment is upon the world. The ruler of this world will be what? Cast out. Cast out. You know, Satan was defeated at the cross. He's on death row right now. And he's trying to take as many people with him as he can. And there's quite a few that are giving in to Satan's lies and deception. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. You know, um, I'm amazed at... How many books are there in the Old Testament? 39. I talked to him earlier and made sure he knew that. 39, Bob. Good job. How many in the New Testament? 27. You might want to learn the names of the books. It'll help you as we go through all these different scriptures, right? Because one day you're going to meet these guys in heaven. You know, you're going to meet them in heaven. You might as well learn their books. One of the hardest things for me was to learn the minor prophets. You know, it just took a long time. And I'm, you know, going through them in my mind. And, and you know, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I should know them, right? <laughs> but we're going to we're going to be studying in this next year. We're going to be studying the minor prophets because they have so much things that are going on in their time that are going on in our lives today in our times. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 Since then the children share in flesh and blood, he himself also partook of, of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He's rendered him powerless. And that he might deliver those who through the fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Subject to slavery all their lives. And, you know, so we're guilty. I mean, we're guilty until... We ask Jesus into our lives as Lord and Savior. And then it says he remembers our sins no more as far as the east is from the west. 
You know, he, he blots them out. You know, all except for Kevin. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> no, all of our sins, right? I, I mean, Satan tries to condemn us and, you know, get us to feel like God doesn't love us anymore. But God loves all of us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. We deserve judgment. But the free gift of God through grace is eternal life. And the Spirit uses God's word mightily in our lives. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 6. I, this whole section here is a great section about putting on the armor of God and walking in love as he has loved us. And In Ephesians chapter 6 it says this, Put on the full armor of God, verse 11. Be strong in the Lord, verse 10. And the strength of his might, that you may be able to stand firm on the solid foundation upon the rock of Jesus. Stand firm, especially in our day and age, against the schemes of the devil. You know, the devil has his schemes. Put on our struggles not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, powers, world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. You know, schemes of the devil. I was just reading this last week that there's a school district that, f that they thought it was fun for Thanksgiving or Halloween that they would have um, drag queens come in and assembly in the schools. Drag queens. You know, just giving out their filth in front of all the kids. And they're just, the kids are being conditioned to accept these things. And so there was a woman that got the flyer about this coming up. And she went to the school board and she said, you know, I, I mean, it was just amazing testimony. And she was saying, how can you do this? How can you promote this as being okay? And the school board shut her down. They didn't want to hear it. And so this, this thing promoted by the school board, promoted by the superintendents, went on, and it's going on in a lot of different places, libraries and all kinds of different. Bring your children. It'll be a happy time. You know, we're going to have food. We're going to have, uh, what is it, jumping bags. We're going to have all these different things. And we're going to have a drag queen show. Guys dressed up as women. Uh, it, Satan, his schemes. And they're being promoted in our society today. He goes on and he says, um, Therefore, because all these things are happening, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, verse 13 says, to stand firm. Stand firm. Don't waver in your faith. Don't waver in God's word. Trust in him. Believe in him. And then he says, uh, verse 14, stand firm. Says it again. Have your loins girded with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And in addition to all, take up the shield of faith, which which with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word, the word of God. Take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, the spirit uses God's sword. They're one. They're in agreement with each other. And uh, God left and the Holy Spirit came that he can indwell in every believer, if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Turn to uh, Romans 10, 17. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. 
chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing from Netflix. TikTok. The newspapers. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from what? The word of God. God builds our faith through his word, through the scriptures. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to love God and love our neighbors. And so we're to live a holy life of faith and trust and obedience. And thank you, Jesus, that you gave us his word the same yesterday, today, and what? Does it change according to the culture or which country you live in? No, it doesn't. And so the Spirit confronts, rebukes, corrects, and trains us in righteousness. God's training us. Is anybody perfect here? No. Kevin. No, his sins haven't been blotted out yet. So, no. We're not perfect. But as we accept Christ into our life, it says that your name is written in the book of life. Tell the person next to you, is your name written in the book of life? Now, I've got a book here, and I've been looking for Kevin. <laughs> oh, it's at the bottom. There it is. Kevin, he's in there, right? He's in there. His wife's at the top of the page, but, you know, <laughs> your name's written in God's book of life for eternity. And God says, I've gone to prepare a home for you, that where I am, you may be also. Now, we have personal problems. We have conflicts. There's marriage issues. You know, there's family things that are going on, financial issues. But you know what? God gives the answers in his word. You just got to study his word. Study to show yourselves approved unto God as workmen that do not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. As you get to know God, get to know his word, study his word. You know, I, I love the different Bibles, and we put it out sometimes that, you know, has a um, fear. And then it has a list of like 20 verses that deal with fear. God's not a God of fear, but of what? Might, power, and a sound mind. So many people, you know, they ask non-Christians, well, what do you think about this? And they find the answers from them, and then they put those things in the practice, and then they're a more of a shipwreck because you're listen, listening to worldly wisdom instead of godly wisdom. So I, I think that God wants us to have victory. He wants us to overcome the evil one. And this is for all ages. It's for all people of all walks of life. And uh, it's essential for us to be thoroughly equipped in God's word. Be thoroughly equipped. Build a strong foundation. Build, build a foundation that, that won't collapse when the floods come. You know, if you were watching TV or you went down to the beach this last week, they had some of the highest waves ever recorded in San Diego, upwards of 20 feet, over, over the, uh, the bridges, the, over the boardwalk, flooding taking place, all these different things. I mean, those, those waves that were crashing upon were just amazing. They were powerful. But God's more powerful than that. And God can do miracles. I've gotten three or four messages at our website, pray for my kids. Pray for what's happening in their lives, their rebellion against God. Pray for our business. They have a Christian flower business. And Julian, pray for us. And I said, we will be praying for you. You know, God can do the impossible. Tell the person next to you, God can do the impossible. We need to believe that. We need to hold on to that. Don't waver, it says, in your faith. Turn to 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. Near the end of your Bibles. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. Well, 1st John chapter 2.
In verse 5 it says, You know that he, Jesus, appeared in order to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one abides in him sins, and no one who sins has seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. But little children and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And then in in, uh, chapter 2, verse 14, it says, I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides where? In you. The word of God abides in you. And then it says, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Verse 17, and the world is passing away in its lust, but the one who does the will of God abides how long? Forever, for eternity. See, it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle that we are in. And there is warfare. God wants to equip us. He wants to get a hold of our minds and our hearts and saturate them with his word. And the Holy Spirit uses that. So what does Satan want to do? He's a counterfeiter. He wants to control people's minds and hearts. And unfortunately, we see that all around us, people are being deceived. They're they're listening to the lies of Satan. You're either a servant of God or you're a servant of Satan. Is there any middle ground? No. You're either a servant of God or a servant of Satan. And so we need the light of Jesus to shine through us as ambassadors in the midst of the darkness in which we live. Men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. And we see those evil deeds everywhere. God wants us to have victory. Turn to Psalms 119. One more passage. Psalms 119. If you have not read Psalms 119, you need to read it. Tonight, it's filled with an admonition for us to get into God's word. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in. In the law of the Lord. How blessed is the one who observes his commandments. His testimonies. Who seek him with all their heart. And then it says in verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to thy word. See God's word doesn't change. With all my heart I have sought thee. Do not let me wander from thy commandments. Man, we've wandered away from God's word and that strong foundation today. He says, don't let me wander away from thy commandments. And then verse 11, thy word have I treasured in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God wants us to have victory. Treasure his word. You know, we, you have different treasures at your house. You guard them, man. You put them in banks. You, you know, you have a, what are those boxes and banks and, you know, all these other things. We treasure these different things. And, but God says treasure his word, guard his word, protect his word in your hearts. You know, that's for all of us. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, 
after 40 days of being in the wilderness, the time that in his flesh he was the weakest, Satan came to him. And Satan, he, he challenged Jesus. He tried to create doubt, just like he did with Adam and Eve. If you are the Son of God. Remember that? If. Three times he said this. If. You know, do this, do that. You know, listen to me. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you're truly the Son of God. And three times Jesus responded to each of those. He said, it is written. What did he do? He went right back to his word. It is written. And as we start this new year, man, I want to see victory in people's lives. I want to see you know, that joy and that peace that only God can bring us in all of our lives, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. James says, don't consider it a strange thing when you encounter various trials. We all have various trials, but we have the Lord. We have victory. Satan is going to throw his fiery darts at you. He can do it today. You know, we all have hobbies or things that we like to do. I like the uh, San Diego State basketball because I played at San Diego State. I played on the basketball team. I love to watch them. Well, yesterday they had a game at 1 o'clock. Finally, I can watch a game. You know, it's not Saturday night or Sunday morning. And as I'm watching the game, they're it's going back and forth with the team that they should have wiped out. Back and forth, back and forth, like 15 changes of who was winning. And, you know, and I'm thinking in my mind, they're not doing the things that they learned. They're not rebounding anymore. They're not blocking out anymore. They're, you know, taking stupid shots and all these other things. And at halftime came, I think we were two points down or something like that. And, and I'm thinking in my mind, I need to call the coach. <laughs> And just tell the team, get back to your foundation. You are one of the top five defensive teams in the nation. This team is wiping you out on the boards. What's wrong with you? I wanted to shake him. Coach, talk to him. And I'm sure that the coach got my email. <laughs> because in the second half, things changed, and they were getting back to their blocking out and foundation and the things that they did to, the, to win 14 games or whatever they are at now. You know, one of the top teams in the nation. Get back to your foundation. I'm thinking, okay, God, that's the sermon I want to do on this weekend. Get back to the foundation. Their, their foundation had cracks in it, had big holes in it. They weren't doing what God wanted them to do. Get back to the foundation. Lord, I just pray for all of us here in this room, God. Oh, that we would just not settle for what the world says is right. What the world says is truth. Satan is a liar, the father of lies. He's a deceiver. He's throwing out his schemes and people are falling right into his traps today. God, you said that we are ambassadors for you, that we have the ministry of reconciliation. May the word of God abide in us. Man, that we would treasure it. God, that we would devour your word, that, man, when we have time, that our devotional life would just get so strong. We'd listen to your word. We'd meditate on your word. We would memorize your scriptures lord that we go through different books of the bible we turn off our phones turn off netflix turn off tiktok turn off all these other distractions lord and just center in on you the author and the perfecter of our faith faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of god why do we have such little faith why, why aren't we strong in the Lord and his might? Why do we not realize 
every day there are spiritual battles, spiritual warfare taking place. Satan wants a foothold. He wants to get into the door somehow of our lives. Create doubt, create confusion. Your word is living and sharper than any two-edged sword. Speaking right to our heart, our minds. God, you, you want your children to be equipped for every good work. And that comes from studying your word, being in your word. God, then the Holy Spirit has some ammunition that he can use to convict us of sin, to lead us to righteousness. There's so much unrighteous trash out there today. And Facebook may not like it, but sin People that are rebelling against God. And you tell our people, your people, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and righteous to forgive us, to heal us. Our, our, we need to pray. We need to get into your word. Our country needs a healing more than ever. There's so much mental illness. There's so much drug abuse, sex abuse, pornography. We listen to drag queens spouting out their junk, trying to corrupt our young kids' minds. Timothy was taught your word from early childhood. His mother, his grandmother, I don't know where the dad was. I don't know where the grandpa was. But God, there's a lot of grandpas and a lot of grandmas here and a lot of parents. Start today. Start today. Teaching them your word. Being an, an example, a living example of someone whose life has been changed by Jesus, transformed by the renewing of our minds. We love you today. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for every person you brought here today. Thank you for all those watching online. May we put your word into practice, not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Let's all stand. Uh, we have plenty of things back there in the uh, food pantry that you can enjoy. If you need some food, take it. If you know somebody that needs it, take them a bag of food. In the name of Jesus, take it in the name of Jesus. Tell them, this is from Jesus. You know, um, my church purchases the food so that Jesus can be honored and glorified. That's what he wants in all of our lives, to be honored and glorified, doesn't he? Be honored and glorified. So uh, there's also uh, low-calorie donuts out there and coffee, <laughs> orange juice. Help yourselves, fellowship with one another. And uh, thank you for being so faithful and uh, so committed to Jesus. What a great church we have. You know, a lot of people say, well, why are you so small? Because we've started 12 other churches today preaching God's word at other different towns you know, around the, this area. So God wants to use us mightily for his honor and for his glory. Let's sing our closing.
signs for all to see. Cause your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. Did God say anything to anybody here today? Raise your hands. Anybody? A few people? All right. I know that God spoke to Kevin. <laughs> Amy's going to grill him on the way home. It's great to see you guys. Tell the person next to you, man, I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> Have a great day. God bless.